So my poor old pole lathe, um, it's a treadle lathe, so it's powered by one's foot and a spring pole. It's, it's had to sit out in the weather since I started my blacksmith shop. And now I'm onto the fork, so it's going to take me a while, but ultimately I'm going to get this refinished again and get it inside where I can actually use it. So this was the primary tool of a bodger. And today I'm going to talk a wee bit of history about, um, well, what the heck is a bodger? <laughs> so the history goes back some 500 years or so, and primarily England. Uh, and to, if you look at dictionary descriptions for the word bodge, it means to botch or repair poorly. But I can assure you that a bodger was anything uh, uh, like a poor, <laughs> a poor builder. In fact, they were quite gifted craftsmen. Uh, basic tools, they used an axe, sharpened on one side. Uh, they used chisels, a draw knife, a shaving horse, and a saw. And from that, they were, and, and the pole lathe. Uh, and from that, they were able to create the beautiful furniture that uh, we still use today and is still, still replicated today or in reproduction mode. So today I'm building a, a, a leather pony. And I've got some of the bits roughed out. I'm, it's cold today, so I decided to work inside in the cabin, and I'll show you where I've got to this point. So we have here a fine example of what a bodger made. Um, so you can see they didn't botch anything here. So if you've ever had the luxury or privilege of setting your tush down on such a fine Windsor back chair as this one, well, you can see what kind of a craftsperson, uh, and you can thank a bodger for this uh, for this design and this chair. Anyway, I got to get to work. So I got most of the bits cut out here, and they're they're pretty rough shape right now. But uh, essentially, what a, a leather pony is, it's a bench where one is able to use both their hands. The same as the shaving horse. So the shaving horse has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years and essentially it's a foot vise. So once you put your material in, you, you, you pinch it with your feet in the vise and that allows you to use both hands. Same thing with leather work. So if you want to do a really good job, particularly with um, uh, opposing stitches like a saddle stitch where you want to get equal tension on each of those stitches to be able to use both hands and fingers on both hands is essential so basically the way it works <laughs> I hope because I, I couldn't find plans for this um, so I just looked at some pictures and I'm trying to replicate something from that uh, time period or my time period so cut a mortise here in the lower portion of the fixed leg so it's going to go in like so, and then it's going to have a leather hinge on this side, which makes this a movable blade. So the leather strap that I'm going to use is going to go through this slot over to here, be stapled on the back side of this, go down through that slot to a lever that I can latch and hold the piece. So I can spread the vise open pull down on the lever that's got the leather going through the two devices and pinch it closed and there's my vise. That's where my leather goes, this is where I sew, this is where I put my tush <laughs> and I'll put four legs on it. So, bit of work to do. Uh, it's probably going to make a lot more sense when you see it actually in, in, in motion. So, best get at it. Okay, I'm coming along. I've got uh, legs on, and I found myself a real stout piece of leather. I think it was a supposed to be a tapadero from a from a saddle, but uh, it'll work. It's really stout. That's going to form the hinge for the claws. So essentially, when it's finished, 
They should work like this one stationary and this one movable on a leather hinge. So I'll cut out a piece, get that on, and uh, we're not too far from seeing if this works. I frequently get asked if I sell the stuff that I make, knives and tomahawks and any guns, etc. And the answer is no. And the reason I don't is I figure if I start selling the stuff that I make that it turns into a job. So I've decided I'd much rather have a passion than a job. So uh, I don't sell the stuff I make. I, I give it away. I give a lot of stuff away and I kind of enjoy that. Um, and two, when I sort of look at learning skills of the 18th century, I could perhaps become a master gun maker or a master blacksmith, but I'm like a, I'm like a person who goes to the church social potluck and I want to taste everything. So I dabble at blacksmithing, I dabble at building guns, I dabble at <laughs> making stuff out of leather, and I like dabbling. I'll never be a master of any of them, but I kind of like it. Okay, that's one working hinge. I think that's going to work. I may end up having to put a guide here just so that I don't get any movement this way, but I think it's probably going to work without it. So to assemble this, I've got I made a tapered pin, a little chunk of walnut. I've got a mortise in the in the base of the of the jaws, and uh, this guy is going in like so. And the mortise goes in like. Okay, that that's pretty tight. It doesn't have to be really snug. Um, it is just leather I'm going to be sewing. So I put the leather strap down through the groove I made. And that's going to go down to something I fabricated uh, down here. I'm not sure it's going to work. But if not, I'm going to have to do some experimentation. Okay, here's the theory. <laughs> I made a wedge over here which is going to keep this on an angle. It's going to sit like this. And then over here, I've made a bunch of notches that once I fasten that, the leg piece will, which the strap's going to wrap around, it's, it's going to hold the vise tight on whatever thickness of leather I'm working on. So, yeah, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Good morning, Fred. <laughs> Our mascot's back. <laughs> morning, Fred. How are you today? I've been watching Fred, and uh, there's a tiny little bit of open water in the pond, and, and Fred's eyeing that, and uh, he's getting minnows and uh, I think the odd frog. And uh, I think if your day starts with a raw frog, you, you know it's only going to get better from there. Yeah, for sure. Quite the regular visitor. So I'm making a, a bag here, a new bag, um, but I'm getting the cart in front of the horse again. Um, I've got these pieces dyed and I'm starting to um, mark and, uh, and punch my holes. 
But I got a couple of things to do on the uh, leather pony and uh, then I'll finish these bits and I'll see if I can actually, how, how much advantage a leather pony is to do it in my hands, which I've done for years. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how it works. So last step of the construction, uh, this is going to be just a crude bench, but the, the, as I progressed along, I thought <laughs> I could actually make it look like a piece of furniture. So I've gone a few extra steps. I've stained some of the white wood. Uh, I decided to use some of my scale material, nice curly piece of maple for my cross brace here. My notch system that I designed works pretty good. So it opens up like so. Your leather goes in the top for stitching. You find a tight spot for that and it locks securely. So I'm just going to put a row of stitches across here. Got a bit of snare wire I put through a couple of holes in the middle of the curly or striped maple piece and uh, yeah, I'll be sewn. Okay. That's going to work and work fine. All the years of sewing freehand are over. Uh, just, just a point. I'm not that wise because uh, when I first put it, I thought I'll just put a slot in that and I put one up here. Well, that was fine. It worked. It gives me a real nice tight pinch in the vice portion, but it didn't leave me enough space to put leather. So I put in a couple more slots. I moved it down. And I'm even thinking now I might, I might have to put a third, but I do have enough uh, space for the project I'm currently working on. Um, and I'm going to give it a try. <laughs> I sh certainly should have done this years ago. Anyway, I can't believe the tension, the quality of the stitching on that is just perfect. It, uh, the tension's consistent and on the welt on the inside, it turned out just perfect. Just absolutely perfect. So I'm pretty pleased with my new tool. I like old tools, so I'm going to use it a lot and someday it will be old. Hopefully pass it on to somebody. Yep, pretty hard to beat that finish.